Let me, let me greet you on behalf of the approximately 6,000 members of the Cayman Islands Conference. One of the conferences in the Young Atlantic Carbon Union and one of the fledging unions in the great inter-American division. It's a joy to be with the people of God. It's a joy sharing with the world church. And since we have been here, we have been enjoying ourselves. And I must confess that I've been truly blessed by the presentations, the study of the word since Thursday morning. May I invite you to bow your heads with me as we talk to the Lord for a moment. We bow before your presence this morning as we open your words, Lord. We ask that you will open up our minds and open up our understanding. We ask that you personally will speak to your people in your own way. Yes, Lord, I'm not necessary here. Please go before me and do your work yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. I wish to thank the Spirit of the living God who impressed upon the minds of the worship committee to allow me to share a word from the Lord at a time like this, a time when we are on the borders of Canaan. The journey is all but over, and our pilgrimage is coming to an end. When the signs foretold in the sun and moon, in earth and sea and sky, aloud proclaim to all mankind that the coming of the Master draweth nigh. These officers that we have elected at this session may very well be the last set of officers. And indeed, the theme since Sabbath is that this General conference session may very well be the last. And if it is not the last for the world church, it could very well be the last for somebody sitting down in this worship service this morning. And if that is so, allow me to share a word with you as we get ready for the end. The worship committee has asked me to speak on the subject, faithful end time living, preparation for his return. Faithful end time living, preparation for his return. Matthew chapter 19, the 16th verse down to verse 20, records a story that I think is worthy of examination by the end time people. Very popular story. It is referred to the story of the rich young ruler. The Bible says, And behold, one came to him and said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? We don't know this guy, fellow's name. Matthew says he's young. Luke and Mark say he's a ruler and that he was rich. I want to note that one thing we do know is that he had heaven on his mind. But, but he was not too sure about his own readiness for heaven. Something was giving this fellow some trouble. Something was bothering his conscience. But when he did an examination of himself, he could not come up with the answer. When he checks himself, he was doing well. He couldn't find no fault with himself. He scored high on the church's membership 
chart. If you read the story right through, you will note that the Lord said to him, Go and keep the commandments. And he Lord, but I've been doing that. He was complicit with church guidelines and policies. He was a faithful commandment-keeping member of the church. But he was taking no chance with his soul. So he heard that Jesus was in town and went to get a second opinion. An independent evaluation of his spiritual condition. May I declare to the church of the living God, those of us who have heaven on our mind, as we get ready for the end, I, I, may I declare that we need a second opinion, an independent evaluation of our spiritual condition. Can I warn the church this morning? cannot trust our own evaluation of our own spiritual condition. But those of us who are marching to Zion must place ourselves under the microscopic eyes of an all-seeing God and ask Him to search us and see if there be anything between myself and my Savior. See if there be some wicked ways in me and cleanse me from every sin and set me free. The young man, if left to himself, the rich young ruler would have qualified himself to take front row seat in the kingdom. In fact, when Jesus said to him, Go keep the commandments. The fellow was not impressed with Jesus' answer. You will note that. For, for if that's all that was necessary to make it to the kingdom, if that was all necessary to make it to the kingdom, he, 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 he was already home. He was not impressed with the answer Jesus gave him. He thought that the test must be greater. Hmm. Somehow, he felt that that was too easy to make it to the kingdom. He says, Lord, with all due respect, um, 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 check again. Mm -hmm. Run another test on me. Because if keeping the commandment is what will get me in the kingdom, then I'm doing well. I've been keeping them from my youth. So he asked Jesus, do one more check on me and tell me what do I still lack? And that question troubles my soul. Lord, what do I still lack? Verse 20 of the text. He says, the young man said to him, all these things I've kept from my youth. What do I Still lack the New King James Version. Add the word still. Matthew puts in the word still, and the word still is giving me trouble. What do I still lack? Something tells me that even though I'm a member of the church in good and regular standing, I'm not yet ready. Something tells me that even though I hold high offices in the church, my soul is not yet ready. Something tells me that even though I've served 40 years and about to retire, all is not yet well with my soul. Something tells me that when, even though I have studied my Sabbath school lesson, return faithful tithe and offering, stick to a vegetarian diet, sing on the choir, I'm still not ready. What do I still lack? What do I still lack? This is a question Members of the last day church ought to be asking Jesus at this conference session. What do we still lack? It's sad that we have preoccupied our mind with other questions at this session. This is the question that we need to ask. What does the Seventh day Adventist church still lack? Members of God's church who are preparing for the end must be asking commandment keeping members of the waiting church must never be contented merely by the keeping of God's commandment but seeking an independent evaluation of our souls 
go to God and ask, what do I still lack? See, the young ruler, uh, his problem was what I call selfies. He took a selfie of himself. <laughs> selfies are pictures of me taken by me. And so, so when he took a selfie, he looks good. He looks okay. And then he made the mistake of handing the camera to Jesus and asked Jesus to take a picture of him. And then Jesus changed the lens. See, because the selfie lens is limited only to the external. Jesus inserted lens that have x-ray capability. That looks straight in his soul. Because on the outside, he looks well. But the x-ray capability, the ultrasound technology, looked into his soul and found that he was not as well as he thought he was. The Seventh-day Adventist church can't afford to take selfies. Because selfies allow us to look good. But we all have to go back to Christ and ask him, what do we still lack? Make no mistake, quite fascinating, I don't know if you notice this, that the profile of the waiting church befits that of the rich young ruler. One, the church is young. Two, the church is rich. We heard the treasurer's report. And three, the church excels in commandment keeping. As part of the preparation plan, the the worship committee asked me to speak on preparation for the end. As part of the preparation plan, the last day church needs to make the same inquiry as this young ruler. Lord, we have been keeping the commandment from our youth. What do we still lack? It makes you wonder what would be the answer from the Lord if we, the last day church, were to ask that question. I wonder what God would have said. Well, well, just in case you're wondering, this is not hypothetical. We have, we have, we have the result of the x-ray picture that the Lord has taken. If you're wondering, what would Jesus say that the church still lack in these last days? You don't have to wonder anymore. It is documented in an email that the Lord sent to the last day church, recorded in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. If you turn your Bibles there in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, the Lord sent an email to the last day church with an answer to the very same question, what do we still lack? He gives an evaluation of what the church lacks and he makes recommendation to address the condition, to prepare for the end. I must warn you before you open the email in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 down to 22. Just before you open that email, I must warn you, it's not good reading. It's not a pass mark. If the church of Laodicea, let me say this slowly. If the church of Laodicea represents God's last day church since 1844, as the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 761 points out, then we are having the exact same problem the rich young ruler was having. Verse 14 to 17 of Revelation. Bible says, and unto the angel of the church of Laodicea write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. As the Bible commentary says, this is addressed to the last day church, which is you and I. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, and I work that thou wert cold and hot. Or hot, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. And next verse says, because you take your time and digest this stuff. This is a selfie that the church took. Because you say you are rich 
and increase with goods and need of nothing. And the Bible says, Knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of gold tried in fire, one that thou mayest be rich, white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesal that thou mayest see. Pardon me for a moment. Like the rich young ruler, the church did an evaluation of itself and could not find any fault with itself. In fact, the church, when it looks on its own self, thinks it's doing well. In the eyes of the church, it's doing well exceptionally well it's ready for the kingdom of god but oh when the second opinion came in when 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 god in his own independent evaluation of the church's spiritual condition when god examines that position it troubles god so the lord came up with a verdict here is the verdict for the seventh day adventist church at the last day the preparation is not sufficient it's woefully lacking it is shortage there's a huge shortage in the waiting church of the living god at least follow me if you can at least the young ruler lacked one thing but the last day church lacked three one first thing that god noticed that the church lacked it's, there's a shortage of refined gold. I checked the SDA Bible commentary. Volume 7, page 762. What does this refined gold mean? And here's what it says. The gold that is short in the church is a symbol of godly faith. Hold on, Lord. A symbol of trust in the living God. So if you ask me, God says, even though the church seemed to be doing well, there's a shortage of faith, godly faith in the last day church. Faith that causes Daniel to survive the lion's den is lacking. Faith that causes three Hebrew boys to survive the fiery furnace is lacking. Faith that caused Peter to walk on water is lacking. Faith that caused prison doors to fly open and chains to fall from the hands of the disciples lacking. Faith that caused Peter and John to say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee, is lacking in the last day church. There's a shortage of faith, faith of our fathers. Without this faith, Hebrews says, it's impossible to please God. So the sad news to the church that we don't have enough faith to take us home. The children of Israel ran out of faith on the borders of Canaan. Hebrews tell us the reason they didn't make it out was a lack of faith, unbelief. After 40 years of journeying, at the end they ran out of faith. This church must not make the same mistake. God says we are short in faith. The new administration of the world church general conference the division the union all the way down for the next five years the lord wants us to direct our attention of building more faith in our church second shortage in the church the independent evaluation came in with it second shortage that god found a shortage of white raiment lord help us Every theologian in this congregation knows that the white raiment in Revelation represents the righteousness of Christ. Hey, last day church lacks the righteousness of Christ. When the church thinks it is clothed, it is naked. Every heaven-bound child of the living God needs the righteousness of God to cover our filthiness. Isaiah says, you can't depend on your selfies because your selfies make you look good. But we need the righteousness because our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. 
the sad situation from this email that God sent to the church. It is a shortage of faith and a shortage of righteousness. Hear me, people in the church. When the church is short on righteousness, then the love among us grow cold. When the church is short of righteousness, we have divisions in the church. When the church is short of righteousness, we will assassinate each other. When the church is short of righteousness, we will marry men with men and women with women. When the church is short on righteousness, we will, we will, we will dilute the truth. Jesus says there's a shortage of righteousness. You know, there's a story... There's a story in Mark chapter 19, verse 14, that troubles my soul. In that story, in that story, in that story, the devil was able to divide the church because the disciples lacked righteousness. The Bible says Jesus went up on Mount of Transfiguration and um, took Peter, James, and John with him. There are 12 members in the church. He took three and leave the nine. They went upon the mountain and they had a wonderful time on the mountain. It was so wonderful that Peter says, Lord, I don't want to come down. Let me build three tabernacles. But on the following day, the Bible says they came down. And when they came down, the nine down there was engulfed in a crowd, a contentious crowd. They were asking questions, a uh, boisterous crowd. Uh, when Jesus came down, he asked, why are you contending with my disciples? And a man rushed to him with a little boy and says, Lord, here's a problem, here's a problem. We came, I came with my little son for you uh, to drive out the demons in him. And they told me you weren't here, so I brought them to your disciples. And I thought your disciples had power. I mean, they have been with you every day. I thought, I thought they had some, some God in them. In fact, the last time I heard, I heard you gave them power to drive out demons and they went out and were successful and even the demons were subjected to them. So I brought my son for them to heal and to my astonishment, they couldn't drive out the demons. And Jesus got, uh, called, called, the, called the boy and in a minute he drove the demons out and everybody was surprised. When they went inside, the disciples say, Lord, we have a question for you. Why couldn't we drive out the demons? Don't answer us publicly. Tell us privately. And Jesus looked at them and said, Hey, hey, hey. This thing comes through fasting and prayer. This thing comes by faith. Well, I struggled with that for a while until I checked Desire of Ages, chapter 46. Ellen White gives me the light on the subject. Ellen White says, The problem why the disciples could not have driven out that demon is that they had up the nine that were left. We're jealous of the three that Jesus took with him. Hello, somebody. Rather than fasting and praying, they were at the foot of the mountain in division and bitterness and contention. And the devil knows just when to throw something in the church's hand when the church is divided. Our church has to remain united. We cannot allow the devil. He knows just when to throw something at us. Ellen White says that situation embarrasses God's church because the people around lack confidence in the disciples. When the church doesn't have righteousness, it is divided. We have a vote coming up on Wednesday, and I don't care which direction it goes. What I care about is the unity of the people of God. By this shall men know. That we are children of God. Well, the third thing that the church lacked from the independent evaluation is a shortage of ISAL. Oh Lord, let me let me help you. The church short in faith, the church short in righteousness, and now the third thing, the church short ISAL. This represents the working presence of the Holy Ghost. God says, if you ask me, what do you still lack? There's a shortage of the power of the Spirit of God in the last day church among the last day people. When the Spirit is short, then the power in the church is short. Let me say that again. When the Spirit is short, then the power in the church is short. Power to witness. Power to ignite a revival of godliness. Power to live right. Power to unite. 
power to stand like a brave with our face to the foe. Hey, when the spirit is short, the power to defend the truth is short. Power, wonder working power. When the spirit is short, we will find ourselves compromising on the edges of the truth rather than standing on the sure word of God. If there's a time when the church needs its eyes wide open, it is now. Three fundamental necessities that the church is lacking. And hear me, members of God's church. We cannot pass through the pearly gates unless we have faith in God, righteousness of Christ, and the Holy Spirit in our lives. The three things we are short. Now, what's worse? You know, what is worse is that the church is not aware that it is lacking these things. Rather, it is functioning under the assumption that it is doing well. It needs nothing. And you ask me, how can our evaluation of ourselves be so strikingly different from God's evaluation of us? How can we be so far out of sync with God and we don't know it? It is clear that the last day church suffers from a sense, a false sense of security. Hey, we think we are spiritually okay when we are not. It is the same identical problem that caused 50% of the virgins to be lost in Matthew 25. Aha, uh -huh. they went to sleep thinking they had oil, thinking they're okay, and do not know that they were lacking in salvation. It is the identical problem that caused the Jews to reject Christ, that they thought they, need, they don't need any Savior because they are biologically connected to Abraham, and that's enough. False sins of security is a greater threat to the preparation plan of the last nature. Let me repeat that. False sense of security is the greatest threat to the preparation plan of the last day church. It causes us to depend less on Jesus and more on our training. False sense of security causes us to depend less on the Holy Spirit and more on our in intellect. Less on the power of the living God and more of our collective wisdom. In these last days, the church of God has to get back to Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arm. Good thing, let me wrap this up for you. The good thing about this bad email is that Jesus didn't leave the church in a destructive condition that it finds the church in. He offers some recommendations, as he did with the rich young ruler. End time living necessitates the implementation of these recommendations in our lives. If I have one word for the new administration, it is that we focus globally on these recommendations that the Lord has made in Revelation chapter 3. Because in Revelation chapter 3, God says, the, situ the spiritual condition of the church disturbs my stomach. But I'm giving the church one more chance. If you open, I will come in and sit with you. I'm giving the church another chance. Jesus says, your case is not yet hopeless. There are some things, listen to me, members of the church. There are some things that are lacking, Jesus says. But I have good news for the church. The things that the last day church lacks, I have them in abundance. Amen. Uh, and by the way, I have them on sale. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, my shop is still open. It is closing time. But, but mercy says don't close the shop as yet. Let me linger a little longer so that somebody can come by of me. Hey, Isaiah says, Isaiah 55 tells us, hey, when you go to the shop to buy the three things that are lacking, what are they again? They are faith in God. What are they again? They are righteousness of Christ. What are they again? They are Holy Spirit, Isaiah says, hey, when you come to buy these three things, you don't need to take your money because they are on sale. Come buy, he without money and without price. Christ makes it available. But there's a warning. If you're going to get them, you're going to get them now before the shop closes. 
problem with the wise, with the five foolish virgins. They also needed something, and they also went to buy. You know the story, don't you? They also went to buy, but it was too late. Jesus says, I have it on sale. And so, therefore, there's hope for the last day church. Number one. Number two, second recommendation Jesus made. He says, hey, as part of the preparation plan, please be prepared for some chastening. Because who I love, I'll have to chasten. The word chasten means to discipline, to correct, to bring you back in line. Jesus says, as part of the preparation plan, I, I, I have to bring you back in line. Hey, God is calling for some repentance of the last day church. Hey, uh, uh, be, please be prepared for some disciplinary measure. And they are not to harm you. They are there to bring you back in line. Recommendation number two. And the final recommendation. He makes to save the church. He says, listen for the, the knocking on your heart's door. What does that mean, God? He says, I, God, am going to make personal visit to each of you. I'm going to be knocking on your door. If any man, if any man, Hears me knocking and open. I will let him and let me in. I'll come in and sit with him and be his God. Jesus says, I'm going to take the initiative and come to you one by one. Hey, hey, I'm not coming to the church as a corporate body. I'm coming to you one by one. I am not knocking on the church's door. I'm knocking on your heart's door. If any man... Here's the knocking. So the recommendation is listen for the knocking because Jesus decides he will visit the church one by one. I love my Lord. He is not giving up on the church. He says, hey, your spiritual situation is bad, but there's still hope for the church. It's not over yet. God is willing to give us another chance. God refuses to give up on the church. He has paid too much for us not to try again. Too much for us not to wait a little longer. From heaven he came and sought her to be his only bride. And with his own blood he bought her. And for her life he died. I can tell you one thing. When it's all over, God is going to take somebody home. Shall you shall I. Someone will enter the pearly gates. Shall you? Shall I? This morning we can turn away miserable from these recommendations like the rich young ruler or we can say, Lord, take my life. Let it be consecrated. Lord, in thee. It's a troubling letter that God sends to the church. And I sat and listened to the Secretary's reports, and I felt good about my church when I heard that we're 18 million strong, when I heard that in five years we were able to gain over 1.5 million members, I felt good. And then it dawned on me that God is never impressed by the numbers. Dawn on me that what God looks on is not the selfie. He looks inside the church, and he asks us one to build more faith among our brethren. Two, to work on our righteousness. To be more righteous. And three, if there's anything that the church needs, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. And God says, those things are available to the last day church. I wonder how many in this congregation this morning can say, Lord, what do I still lack? I've been a Sabbath school teacher all my life, but something inside of me tells me all is not well. What do I 
still lack. Is there anybody in this great congregation who want to say, Lord, what do I still lack? And ask God for a second, an independent opinion of your soul salvation. If that describes you, can you stand on your feet to say, Lord, I'm standing because I want a second independent evaluation of my own soul. When all my labor on earth are over, I want to meet you. In everlasting show. I ain't taking no chances with my soul salvation. I've kept the commandment. I've returned my tithe. I've studied my Sabbath school lesson. I've been faithful in the church. What do I still lack? And if I lacked anything, Lord, then I give myself to you. Please, please come in. Take up residency. Please give me those things that I lack because I understand that they're available for sale and I'm here to purchase. Heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Oh, my Father, what an amazing love you have for us. Not willing that any of us should perish. God, we refuse to blunder on the borders again. We refuse, Lord, we refuse to blunder again. So we're standing this morning as a world church to recognize the lacking, the shortages in our lives and in our church, in our conferences, in our unions. We're standing this morning, ask, because we know your evaluation is always right. We know, Lord, we can't debate it. So we come on our knees spiritually asking you, Father, to please supply us. Supply us with greater faith. Supply us with your righteousness. Supply us, Lord, with a double portion of your Holy Spirit so that as we cross over in the promised land, every single one of us it can be said it is well with our soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this reminder. We will take it into consideration as we plan for the future. This is our prayer we ask in Jesus. Ah. Uh...